Hi everyone out there. Today's video is for sopranos. I want to show you how to sing De Vieni Non Tardar from Le Nozze di Figaro, a wonderful Mozart aria. So if you're interested in singing it beautifully, stay tuned. Hi there! In case we don't know each other yet, my name is Freya Casey. I'm a professional singer and vocal coach from Germany. Let's dive right in. I sung this role many times. It was my first big role, all the recitativos in the opera. It's a lot to learn. But for now, we're going to talk about De Vieni Non Tardar, just a short setup. Susanna, she's in the garden and she is trying to make Figaro jealous. He doesn't know that she knows that it's him. <laughs> Okay, it's really a complicated story, but she's playing with him. The most important thing about this aria is it doesn't sit high, so it's really in the middle of a soprano's voice, and it also goes quite low down. So the challenge is to have beautiful resonance, very legato lines, and a great shimmer, and just resonance, overtones, silvery sound. So, in order to have that, we want to try to have vibrato on all the time, not a huge wobbly one. A nice, even, pretty, very subtle vibrato. Not subtle in a sense that it's not noticeable, but it shouldn't distract. Okay, so it starts on De Vieni Non Tardar. I will put a link below. There's an amazing video by, I think John Mario is his name. He puts out awesome videos about just the Italian diction. I'm not gonna go over that, but it is all about vowel placement. De Vieni Non Tardar O Gioia Bella so what's really important is that you put the vowels very nicely. So it's not de vieni, de vieni. Make them bright, not narrow, nice vertical pharyngeal space. Lift that soft palate. Give it tons of space. Sing into your mask. Try to aim for this right here, placing high. So when you imagine to sing here, you automatically lift a little bit more in the back of your throat. And then you want to not be heavy on the top pitch, but you want to make it light and floaty. So instead of you want to do it the opposite. You want to float. So, joya, so whenever you have a voiced consonant, such as j, m, m, v, anything like that, you want to give it that pitch. You don't want to go, so there's lots of Vowels, vieniovia. So it's really, you have to practice those three pitches with all those syllables going in there. I want to hear the v, the e, and the e. See how I'm really using my lips also to shape? And then again, it's almost an octave. It's more than an octave. Um, no, it's less than an octave. It's a seventh. It's from a high F to the G down here, uh, G4. So it's a large interval. You want to make it legato. You don't want to drag or slur or slide. You don't want to glissando or anything like, or a portamento. That is not very Mozart. You want to still connect it though. And you want to make that top pitch shimmery. How do you do that? By giving it lots of space. Instead of pushing it, you want to sing it lightly. Give it space. O per goder. And give it vibrato. So if I sing without vibrato, 
not as pretty as and again when there's a double l in italian it's like cappella yeah i want to hear that double l make it five okay so what we want to do this is hard there is a non on the high f here work hard to sing through the mm to make it still resonant. You don't want to drop the ends. In a lot of Mozart arias, there are nasal sounds on high pitches. Now this is not a really high pitch, but it's on the high side when it comes to singing a nasal sound. So you want to work really hard to give that mm in the back of your throat, you want to give it space. So, and again, you don't want to push the high pitch, but you want to float it out, right? So, that's the hardest part about the entire aria, I think. Let's talk about the low part here. You don't want to sound dark or low, but notice that it's on the night, right? Notturna face, the face of the night. So Mozart does everything intentionally. So it's almost like this darkness that is happening in your voice, except that you don't want to sound dark. It already sounds dark just by being that low. So what you want to do, you want to mix in some chest voice, but you want to be very open in the back of your pharynx. So you want to go, no face, which means I just relax my throat. Not what we want. We want a consistent sound. We still want to sound like this is opera. We are a soprano. You don't want to sound like a pop singer suddenly. I think this is a great exercise. I don't want to go You definitely don't want to push your larynx. And pay attention to especially not darkening the vowels. You don't want to falter. You don't want to cover. You want to hear. It's like my teacher always did this. You want to see your beautiful white teeth, right? And that really helps to not cover, but to help the sound brighten up just a bit. Let's continue. Now, so now we go, we go, you have to say that first, Ugh, it's hard, it's a tongue breaker without the tongue, it's a mouth breaker. I recommend you practice that very slowly because in order to fit all the vowels in, it has to kind of settle into your automatism of like the motion. It's just a game, uh, the same. So we still want to hear the A because it's and. And we want to hear Brunail. No, it's not E, but it's more E. It's more closed, but it's high. Brunail, Brunail. Traditionally, I would put all of the on the high F. That's how I always learned it. So when there's something in Mozart, here it's always this and in the strings play pizzicato. So the violins are all just, just plucking away and it's very soft what they do. Very, very soft. Very subtle. It's very tender. So you are very exposed here, but you want to keep that one, two, three, heavy, light, light. So it's always the one, two, three, four. 
okay? You want to keep that very light so it's not torture. So you want to think It's really the one that's the more heavy one. And on ta, che, the che, very light, short, don't hang on to it. Okay, so let's go. Now we have the next phrase. And again, it's Laura. So don't hang on to that ra. So again, it's Que col dolce susurro il coristaura. So it's one long arch that you make. It's one long phrase. It's so connected. But within that, you always gravitate toward the one. And that's that has that you lean into it. It's not accented. It's more like a very smooth leaning into. And again, it's that same principle. The high pitch, because it's not on the one, the high pitch isn't the one that has more weight. It's the one that has more weight. <laughs> Also, the consonants are very important. And then I love this next part. That's the fun part to sing. I don't know. I love that part. So, nice space. Quirido no, no. And on the E, you want to make sure you neither make it very spread. Quirido no, to re. It's too brassy. Quirido. It's too dark. You basically want to say like an E, but relax your cheeks. Qui and the qui ri because it's only a pickup note and qui ri the ri is on the downbeat the qui although it's quite low you don't want to make it heavy it's just a very light pickup note qui ri no no i fiore di fresca let's talk about fiore you still have to get that double T in there, which means the E, T, there's a stop. It's a short E, T. It's almost like you, and then you stop by putting your tongue against your teeth already, getting ready for it. T, and then T, T, T. The Italian T is a little bit more lisped than the English one. So it's not Fioretti, but it's Fioretti. And so make it short. See how it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe you want to practice that even separately. Nice support. And it's almost like you give with your diaphragm the slightest impulse. And I think in this here, it's the top note that is the strongest. I think it just kind of propels you up there. So that's actually a pitch that's not in the key. It's a neighboring tone. It's dissonant. So lean into that more. It's much more weighted and then lighten up and resolve it into from the G sharp dissonant and then to the A. Fresca. Nice resolve. And now I love this next phrase also because it has like this large range again. I, uh, I piace rino mor qui tutto adesca. And again, again, adesca, adesca. 
light on that last note. Short, don't hang on to it. I always focus on openness. Oh, when you notice your jaw getting really tense, you have lots of going on, then you need to go back to the drawing board and really work on your vowels. I piacere, piacere, piacere. See? Piacere. If I make it just a little darker, it doesn't have that ring. Piacere. And again, you don't want to. You don't want to make it too heavy. Make it fit together with the rest. When you have long pitches, especially in Mozart, oh, I love it. We have some long notes coming up now that are, right now it was mostly eighth notes. Dun, 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 a little bit fourth notes here. But now we have some longer ones. And it has a reason. So the the strings go, mm, da, da, mm, da, da, mm, da, da, mm, da, da. So now the strings are beginning to add some legato. Before it was really short, 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 and now they're adding the legato. Okay, so there's the pluck, da, da, pluck, da, da, in the strings. So what you want to do is. You don't want to go. When it's all the same, it becomes mush. It's not beautiful. It's not phrased. So. And it's like, come, uh, my good one. <laughs> Ben mio. Ben is like, one good one. Come, my dear. And so you want to entice him. But when you do that, think of what the strings do. So you don't go, yeah. You don't want to fall into their nice legato. So it's like, can you hear how I'm just playing with the dynamics? I'm not just staying loud. I I lean in a little bit, then I I lighten up a bit, and then before I continue forward to to the moving pitches, the moving notes that are coming up, I'm getting a little bit louder again. And I love this. What you want to make sure is that the tr is nice and resonant also. It's practically on that pitch. I mean, like, really? It needs to be tr It's actually, it's not a rolled, it's a flipped, so it's short, but I still want to hear resonance in that. Tr and instant vibrato. Tr So what we want here, there are some pitches dum dum da dum 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 dum. We don't want to go. But and again the lower pitch don't get too heavy. And now again, long one, and then there we have a fermato. Vieni. I think vie, e, vieni. You have to kind of play around and see which version of the vowel is better resonant. For me, let's see. It can't be too close. Vieni, vieni. Vieni. I mean, it is a closed vowel, so you have to really play back here play with your pharyngeal space and every subtle change has a huge change in actual resonance. You, you want to try to 
get all the resonance out of it by really playing with the positioning, making it a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, a little bit more narrow, a little bit wider, on like here, until you have the feeling it has that silvery, shimmery shine. You'll hear it. When, when, when you get it, you'll know that's it. It feels good and it sounds good. Oh, that wasn't a good one, but it's in combination with a vibrato. I think vibrato is gets much harder when you get to the lower parts because you can't really compress as much. The subglottal compression isn't quite as strong. So your breath management and the even flow of your breath does get a little harder. Vieni, vieni. So you don't, again, you don't want to make the top heavy. Vieni. And there's a fermata, which means the instrumentalist, whether you have a pianist or an orchestra. Now, of course, when you have a backing track, it's a little frustrating because you can't really sing it like you want to sing it on those fermatas. Normally, the singer determines how long they want to do them. Vieni, light, and the Vieni. When you go higher on the E, you, you, you can open just a little bit more, just a tiny bit, so you have the resonance. And then breath. The good thing is here in your breath, you tell the pianist or the orchestra, um, basically the conductor, and the conductor then tells the orchestra when to play, you tell them by how you breathe. So it's really important here that you go So really important to give a very solid up motion. So, you know, basically, when you breathe, the conductor goes, or the pianist goes like, and then plays. Okay, so T, T, so it's not T, but T. Again, has, it's flipped, but it has a pitch. to go on the end also in coronar in crown to, to crown so again da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da so lean into the one and then the top one is light and open and floaty I have some videos about how to sing higher easier and the secret is to actually instead of thinking heavy on the top Think light on the top, very little air, lots of compression, but openness is so important. Lots of lips here. See, I'm not really moving my jaw. It's really just the space in here. And I love to not breathe between in coronar di rose because here, not in this instance, and in the last one, yeah. So basically, you want to just keep it in one. stays in tempo here and then it's the same but it stays on the top and now the top one when you hold it the strings go so they have a moving part and you just hold and so really now it's it's actually showtime for the strings, but 
you want to have a beautiful tone. It's almost like you're accompanying the strings now. In and I love to start soft because then the strings, it's almost like it develops. That's kind of how the phrasing is for the strings. So you want to follow that a little bit. Oh no. And then toward the end, of course, do that decrescendo. And now I think the ending is so hard. In legato but not too much sliding connected but not like you know you don't want to make it puccini no. that's not exactly mozart you want to make it very subtle no glissandi here of course some sometimes you may do like or something like that but you know what I think for this aria, I love the purity of the aria. I love the purity. It's very simple. It's not, there are not, no fast things. There are no coloraturas. And I think that was intended to not really have any cadenzas here, but very, leave it simple. I personally love this aria to stay as is, very simple, no added fluff or ad libs, anything like that. So you, again, same principle as before. You want to make it in See how even within every pitch in itself doesn't stay the same from front to end. It always has to do with when am I going to move? When am I going to move? Where am I standing still and where am I going forward? And then the last one. Be very careful here. This is so freaking hard. Because what you don't want is you don't want to have anything that is not perfect. This onset needs to be so perfect. It's the last phrase. It's not anything spectacular like you know some arias they end and then in the orchestra dum, 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 dum. and here it's really just so unspectacular but what is spectacular is that actually for the vocalist this is so much harder it is so much harder now this interval was the wrong pitch here so you want to practice that forever and ever. D, which means place the underlying vowel that you, I mean, there's always an underlying vowel. The, the you can either go the or d or d. That shape that you make when you do the d. You have to already be in the e shape further back. Basically, I'm thinking E, and I'm supported, I'm well inhaled, I'm well expanded, and then I don't fall into, I very controlled, give it some air. And again, it's don't fall into that low pitch. So again, it's a flipped one, it's not a rolled one, that was too long what I just did. That was maybe a little too dark on my end. On the O, as much space as you can give it. It's only an F. And then it goes to like, you know, the G. And you still want to be heard in the entire theater which is really hard. It's not that hard in this aria because the strings are very, very subtle. They're not loud at any time, so you don't have to fight them. 
But what you do have to do is really work on the overtones and constantly asking yourself, is this vowel that I'm singing, is it resonant enough? Am I getting all the resonance out of it that I possibly can? Let me know in the comments, how hard is this aria for you? I think it's one of the hardest ones, although it seems in the beginning one of the easiest. But in order to sing it beautifully and like it was meant to be sung, I think it's very, very difficult. It sits mid to low voice a lot, and then it has those intervals, and I just think it's it's hard for a higher soprano or a soprette. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and recommend it to a friend or someone you know who also wants to sing this. If you want more free resources, check also out my free series, How to Sing Opera, here on YouTube. A few videos about other arias, about how to sing opera, and also on my website, MasterYourVoice.tv, I have some more free resources that you can check out, including a seven days to perfect support course. Because support is very, very important. And also, if you have not read my book yet, check out my book, Master Your Voice. You can get it on Amazon. Have a blessed day. Always keep on singing and always keep a song in your heart. Makes me feel sad for the rest.